Fala pessoal, hoje nós vamos falar um pouquinho sobre o projeto Ateliê, estou com vários convidados muito especiais, estou com a Laís, estou com o Patrick, estou também com o Chris e são pessoas que estão envolvidas tanto com o projeto Ateliê quanto com o projeto KDE e poxa, é uma honra estar aqui com esse pessoal e eu vou começar dando a voz para a Laís é, esse vídeo vai ser em inglês e vocês vão ter a legenda aí no YouTube, tá? É só habilitar a legenda. Provavelmente ele será quebrado, depende da minha disponibilidade para conseguir fazer a legenda de uma vez só. Mas vamos lá, sem muitas, sem muita enrolação, vamos conversar com a Laís. So, Laís, uh, could you briefly introduce yourself and tell how you end up at the project? Uh, hello everyone, good night. Uh, good evening. Uh, well, as Rotor said, my name is Lais. I joined KD on the end of the 2015 when I met the guys on Latinoware. That was a fun event because I went to Latinoware for the first time and I was writing a program with QT for half a an year and I wasn't finding any help in Portuguese and back then my English was very awful. And then I got the bus to the hotel and was complaining about I don't know any anyone in Brazil that works with Qt and I was sit beside Thomas and he turned around and said what the hell are you talking about and then on the day after that Thomas invited me to join KDE with the project that I was working before Uh, that pro that project kind of died, and we from it we created Atelier right after that. When Chris joined our RC channel and asked the, if he he could help us on that, and since then we are um, for more than two years now working on Atelier, and hope to try to bring a better solution for the printing uh, that are that is a free software. And I worked with KDE since then on Atelier and a couple more projects. I helped on the fundraising working group, so I helped to organize the fundraising and a couple more things. And from time to time I contribute with other projects, but for KDE is that, is that what I do. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Congrats. Thanks. So Patrick would like to say something. Uh, so hello everybody. Uh, Thank you for the invite again, and thank you to allow us to talk about Atelier in AT Core. And uh, as I said before, my name is Patrick. I work with KDE uh, from, I think, three years already. And I started with QDevelop, KDevelop, that's the uh, IDE uh, that's mainly used for C++, but can use it for Python and other things. And after finishing My Google SMF code with key develop, I started with uh, Atelier because I was in the 3D printer hype after <laughs> after I tried to build my own from scratch uh, and from wood also. And after talking with Tomas, uh, he said that there is a 3D printing project that was starting. And because of my back end in electronics, uh, I started to code the Atelier backend that is AT Core, and because of that, I, I started to contribute to the project. Uh, I'm not um, uh, mainly contributing with it anymore. Uh, I wish I would have more time with my 3D printer in Atelier project, uh, but well, I am still with the project, and uh, I aim to contribute, continue to contribute to it uh, as much as I can. Chris, it's your turn. Welcome to this channel. All right, thank you. Uh, my name's Chris. I've uh, I started working with KDE when I was trying to help with the old 3D printing solution that Lays was talking about, and uh, we pretty much just started a new one. It was about two and a half, almost three years since we started talking about that, and I've been working on uh, Atelier for the past two years and uh, AT Core as well as uh, some other various KDE projects. Oh, very nice. Congrats, too. 
So I think uh, before we start talking about Atelier, I think you could give a very briefly talk about how the 3D printing works. A 3D printer um, is mostly used to create fast prototypes. So uh, with that, uh, the people started to make it more cheaper after some patents they started to break after some years and they started to create like open source 3D printers or cheaper 3D printers for the public. Uh, and the first it was a bit of hype because you could print everything that you can, like you can print a mug, you can print a table, you can print a new 3D printer, so you can directly print everything that you dream to have and there is no, it's not able to get in a near store or you need to personalize something or you need to to build or create a, a 3D object that it's necessary to your work or to your house. Like you can print things to your, to the, uh, to put your mug, you can print things to put your keys, you can pr print things to, to, and everything that you want. Uh, and that's the best thing about 3D printers because it, there is an infinity uh, number of items that you can get for free because a lot of people create these 3D items for free for everybody. And also there are people that design and create these 3D components to print it with your 3D printing. Uh, like, how like can I say, uh, any number of items like that you can put in your house or that you can use in your factory. <laughs> as CP is showing, uh, a small comfy, uh, I have one also. Uh, so it, it's possible to do a lot of good things. Uh, I know that Sif does have a lot of examples because he prints a lot of things for him and a lot of things for his daughter. Uh, and print toys and everything else. So that, that that's a great thing about 3D printers. And from the price perspective, 3D printers gone from thousands of thousands of dollars to be less than $300 in some case, so you can get a 3D printer for almost 1,000 reais. So this is pretty cheap for uh, some complex, uh, this complex machine. And this is the, I think, uh, the best use case that I can say, probably SIF can uh, make my answer more complete now. 3D printers are kind of like if you've ever seen a plotter, it kind of works like that, but Instead of drawing once, it goes up a little bit and it draws again. But instead of doing it in like marker, it does it in plastic. It's generally how I describe it to people who don't know anything about 3D printing. So, uh, what is the Atelier project for people that don't know you guys? Atelier, uh, you have a 3D printer, right? You can connect it to your computer or not. So uh, most of the printers comes with a LCD screen, small and a, a button on the side, so you can turn uh, between the controls and control the printer, I like see is showing. But that makes usability like a hell, because for example, I, I got a printer once that to turn the emergency control, I need to move around three minutes so I could get there. And so, there is the thing that this kind of software that is called a printer host, that is a software that was in your computer or in, in a server, on a Raspberry Pi, depends on what you want. And you can connect the printer through it, to a, a USB cable, and control the printer from your computer. Atelier is that because, uh, as Patrick always say to the printing, when the painting start to expire, you got you got this really big move because the printers start to go on free software or an open source license, and the software after the printer also goes in that way. But the major printer host in the market, that is Repetier host, it was open source like until three years ago, and they closed the source and the software is not compat compatible with all the platforms and you have a lot of issues so we began to, to work on Atelier to solve that to give people a good open source solution, free software because Atelier is a free software solution to help people to use a good software that they know what 
they they are doing and they have full control on that on their hands because we have the code open source and instead of repetitive holes so atelier uh, we built atelier to uh, fill that gap on the free software for to the printing and we are trying to give the experience to control the 3D printer for your from your computer and on the future for mobile device and small device the better the best experience that we can get, have uh, with KDE and Qt tools the other the other nice thing that we uh, we want to do is we want to make it easy as Lays was saying some of the other hosts they have some really complicated ways of doing some stuff so we're trying to also approach it from an ease of use standpoint as well yeah uh, because uh i don't know how much people that watch your channel know about software but we have all this thing about usability about user experience and how we, we need to bring good experience for the user for example i will give uh nothing related to the repeat example you have a website and if you if you start to if your site uh takes three seconds to load like 90%, 90% of the people will leave the site it's because you don't have a good user experience. Your sites don't load fast. So to the, uh, bringing that experience to the printing is like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a 3D printer and we are like almost three years of project. So from time to time I get printer for my friends to test, to experience and I consider myself a dummy user. So I want things to get simple. I don't want things to get complicated because what I, we see on the other solutions is that some of the things that should be simple are complicated because they assume that all the users are technical users and most of them are not. So we are trying to reach uh, these people that are not uh, advanced users but also giving the power necessary for people that are advanced users. That's at least my point of view on, on this project. Patrick, would you like to say something? No, I believe that Sif and Chris said it all. So uh, besides the usage, the most technical usage of 3D printers, we need a friendly and easy to use uh, program for everybody that allows uh, like Lay said, the simpler user, the user that wants to do simple things and go straight to the point, and the users that want advanced settings, because we should provide the same user experience for both. So we should keep liberty for the advanced user, and we should show only what is necessary for the first time user. And that's what we're trying to accomplish with our new graph user interface. So, uh, could you tell a little more about AT Core in Atelier? Because when you go to Atelier sites, you have these both projects side to side. Uh, I don't know if uh, everybody that's, that will watch this video uh, knows about AT Core and Atelier, uh, how things works together uh, and I, I would like you to say a little about this two I don't know if I can say projects or modules yeah yeah you can say projects because we are with the idea that keep it simple okay and when we start atelier we couldn't start from the interface we need to start from the back end and then was when at core was born at core it stands for atelier core so at core is the api that manages all the uh, the serial communication of the printer so it's a uh, interface with a, a few plugins and a couple more stuff that Steve can talk better because he's working more on that and it's an api this api is agnostic for an interface you can plug in any kind of interface above it. Uh, we have Atelier, a proper interface. We have the AT Core test client because we needed to test the printer, not the interface when we were starting. 
So we built a T-Core and a simple test client with the basic commands of the uh, controls of the printer so we could test a T-Core and keep improving it. And then you can plug any interface on it that talks with C++. So we can have, uh, we have the proper atelier, as I was saying, there was this one guy that made one for Raspberry was with KML. That the guy, yeah, with KML yeah, that's um... not for QT, but if he get crazy, we can do an interface with Python. So it's agnostic for interface, so we can like scale the project without uh, making a funnel on the interface to, to limit our possibilities. And then we have Atelier, that is the, uh, the user interface that talks uh, with ATCore to manage the printer. That, uh, this breaking of this structure from backend, from the slide before the interface, gave us uh, a power that any other printer host has, that is the ability to control more than one printer with one instance. So if in one instance of Atelier, we can control N printers. We have some uh, little issues about that. We need to, we are investigating because some uh, conflicts on the low level. But if the printers don't have the same firmware, that's very technical now, uh, that, that problem don't, don't happen uh, of controlling. But that's too much technical now. But uh, this is to allow us to build any interface above that core. And like we can drop one interface and build another without compromising the base code. Sif, would you like to say something? So like Lays was saying, when we started Atelier, we were looking to do the printing immediately. And we realized we didn't have a way to talk to the 3D printer at all. So we had to write that first, and uh, that is a T core. Um, aside from the serial, it also has a test client, which provides several very basic widgets that you can use in your project, or well, we use in our host project Atelier, um, which gives us a place to test them before we send them to production as well. Okay, Patrick would like to say something. Uh the AT core backend, uh, we were able to do all the necessary tasks and also uh, to make it possible to test the backend of Atelier without any uh, user or any person iteration. So if we need to write tasks, if we need to create a fake printer that needs to communicate with uh, atelier to test the compatibility with all the firmers and everything else necessary to make sure that all updates and all versions are compatible with all the firmers of the 3D printers, all the models, everything else. We could be able to test everything and make sure that everything uh, is working the way it should. And also, as they said, uh, this division between backend and the frontend allow us to change the graph user interface, allow us to create two great products because we have the backend, we have the frontend. If someone wants to use the frontend, it's good for everybody. If someone wants to use the backend to create a, another graph user interface and wants to collaborate with our project, it's also good for everybody. So and that's a great case. And also a good thing that we have in, in AT car is the plugin instructory. So each 3D printer has a femur. Uh, this femur is, uh, is like you have a, a car, you have a BMW, you have a Volkswagen, you have a Ford, you have different types of cars. So you have different types of 3D printers and each car has a different system or a different uh, oil or different uh, brake, a different tire. So the same thing is with 3D printers and I'll cars are different or our cars are, has different models and with that uh, the same idea comes to 3d printers with different models we have different softwares and everything else so with AT car we have plugins that deals with each printer with different models and different firmers 
And this also allows everybody to simply write it down uh, a new firmware comfortable plugin. And if someone wants to create a closed source 3D printer, you can also create the plugin and can share the binary. You just need to pay the license for it and can ship with AT car also. So it's a win-win situation for everybody. Okay, so uh, every OS supported hardware will work with ATD. So the, the, the only difference between the 3D printers is, is the way that it communicates with the computer or anything that they need to communicate with. So there is 3D printers that use uh, internet or Wi-Fi. There are some 3D printers that use serial parts, uh, the old version one. And there is some that use Bluetooth, that there are others that use different type of connections. So the only way that you need to do is to abstract these type of connections. Uh, right now, AT car uh, only connects via serial. That is the typical way that you communicate with the 3D printer. Uh, we are aiming to provide different connection types, uh, different uh, binary compatibility between uh, the 3D module that is generated by this, the software and the one that is accepted by the 3D printer. So there is this case because you have the, communica the communication type and you have also uh, the file that you need to share with the 3D printer in the, in the, all the data that you need to send to it. So that's a bit tricky. Uh, we, we are aiming to, to improve that uh, beyond the serial compatibility and also to make, to make it as simple as possible to put in an embedded device like uh, Lee said, a Raspberry Berry or a simple cell phone. And with that, you can share the 3D printer via network or via uh, cell phone application. And also to use an uh, old hardware like an old cell phone to run Atelier with 80 car in a small device, uh, probably running Kirigami as we said in uh, the last meeting. Uh, to provide a small and simple user interface and also a network communication for anyone that wants to use Atelier in a desktop and communicate with a 3D printer.